I know too well that my salary was not enough. It was just about 30,000 Naira. Then I have to go and pay for a mud house, to rent a mud house. I bought mats. I slept on mats throughout the season because I couldn't afford foam. And it was only me that knew what I was going through. People in Nigeria, when they call this, ah, senior man, ah, you, are, you don't sign, you don't. I was just packaging myself. But inside me, I knew I was going somewhere. I think with, for me, I think uh, not signing for Togo is the best thing I did to my career. You know, coming to Nigeria was a, taking a decision to play for Nigeria was the best decision I've ever taken. Yeah, my name is uh, John Nobu Barunima from uh, Gokana, River State, Ogoni. Currently the captain of Eimba and uh, I'm a goalkeeper. I think it all started from the Governor's Cup in River State, where I represented my state. Though I was not opportune to be the one that mounted the post that day, but God's grace speaks for me. After the game, we were just walking towards the gate and someone called me and said, were you the one that was inside? I know I wasn't the one that was inside the uh, post that day, but something in me just said, I should say yes. And I said yes. And he said, okay, give me your number. And I did. And when the guy that was inside the post gave me, he, he collected the guy's number as well. So I think that was the beginning of everything. So they invited us for uh, festival trials and for over a year. I, I know too well, it wasn't easy for me. Most times I would have to pay transport from Gokana to Trailer Park and jog from Trailer Park to Elekaya Stadium for a period of one year and at the end of the day I was able to make the list to represent River State in the Sour 17 National Sport Festival 2011 and I was playing with an amateur team in Port Harcourt, Senna Shaw FC and there I was, uh, I think I was a third choice goalkeeper then. I didn't play any game during the season. I was just there to complete the number and someone called me and said, would you like to play in uh, Togo League? And I said, yes, why not? that here I am, how much is my salary? 10,000 Naira. So I think Togo League will be better. At least, at least uh, it's a Premier League and I think maybe the salary will be... Me, I was thinking I'm going to Europe already because, you know, when you are in Nigeria and you have not traveled to that uh, part of African country, just feel everything is okay with them. So that was how I moved to Togo. I got to Togo. I think the club I signed in Togo was the lowest club in Togo. I got five in number that left for Tycos and went to Togo. So we got to Togo and... Um, Four of my guys said that uh, they can't stay because it was difficult. The salary was at the range of 60,000 safers, which is about 30,000 Naira in, in Nigeria currency then. And knowing to where you're going to pay for your house rent, you pay for your uh, NEPA bill, your water, your food, you have to recharge your phone and go to train and take care of yourself too. It was going to be easy. They said, no, they can't stay. They have to go back. You know, if a different country, when you are paid 30,000 Naira, I paid for house rent about, uh, was it 5,000 every month? Then I paid light beef uh, every week 500. I paid for water every week 500. And I have to feed myself three times in a day. And knowing too well that their food is different. So I have to go. There was this guy that I think the guy helped me so much. He's from Igbo, he's from Abia State. Someone introduced me to him. I was the one that was in the house. I'll just go and buy beans, I'll buy rice, I'll go to his house and cook. The after training, I'll go there and eat and leave the food. Sometimes the family, because the family, would just, I, I, I was just packaging myself. I think most things that helped me, I was taking Gary, smoking, drinking Gary as my best food then, because that was the only option. And I told myself that I have to start from here. I know the money is not much. I know I'm not going to, I may not be able to save anything, but I can't go back to Nigeria. I have to start from here. And that was how I started from Togo. And I think I met the club. Uh, that was the second two games to end the first round and they were having just two points. They were fighting relegation, like seriously. And I joined the club and to the glory of God, we finished, we finished ninth on the league table. We escaped relegation at the end of the season. So that was how I came back to Nigeria and then went to Rivers United, joined Rivers United for a training tour and they were like, ah, 
this guy, we have not seen you play, you're just coming and they don't know much about me then and they were like, okay, we're going to keep you on standby. Then maybe at the middle of the season, we can sign you. And I told myself, no, I know what I did in Togo and my name is still there. And I said, no, that was how I took my back. I left Rivers Netek and I went to Togo. I got to Togo to the glory of God. I signed the biggest club in Togo. I signed the biggest club in Togo then, ASC Kara. The glory of God, I played Togo League that year and I won the league, won the FA Cup, won the best goalkeeper of the season and to the point of I was about to nationalize in Togo because so many thoughts were coming and Nigeria have a lot of goalkeepers so why coming back to Nigeria to the point I remember a day I spoke with Adebayo on phone they put him on phone I said ah my brother you don't have to go back that was how I, I, I stay here and today things is working well for me you have to stay and to me I was confused because I look at where I'm coming from and I know too well I have a lot of responsibilities back home and people are looking up to me and I have to start something to make sure I can uh, get money for myself and family as well so after then, uh, Nigeria uh, was having a game with Togo then, and I was in the camp of the Togo, Togolese International then, the on the, the, the chanting, I was in their camp already. So we were preparing to play against Nigeria and <laughs> it wasn't really, really easy. So many thoughts, my manager called, people my father was calling and they said, uh, are, are you really sure you want to do this? And I said, yes, because I know too well that going back to Nigeria is not going to be easy for me. but. I think a day to that game, something happened and I changed my mind. I think I came in contact with Imam Ma and he said, John, I promise you, don't take this decision. You can still make your way to the Super Eagles of Nigeria. I strongly believe I've watched you because he was watching our training. I've watched you and I strongly believe that you have something in you. And I got home that day and I told myself, oh, I'll make it to the Super Eagles of Nigeria one day. And that was how I came back to Nigeria. Then I came back to Nigeria and I still went to the training tour with Rivers United, neighboring state. And we're in the hotel and we have about nine goalkeepers, professional goalkeepers, big, big names. And I was ah, like, how is this going to work? I was looking at the whole thing. They already signed three goalkeepers already. And they have Akande Abiodu, their former goalkeeper that was injured, he's back. And he's there. So they are looking at between, the, there is no way they're going to drop Akande because he was already on the payroll. So I looked at the whole procedure and I told myself, no, I don't belong here now. That was how I took my back to Cameroon again. I went to Cameroon. There was a club in Cameroon that contacted me. I went to Cameroon, Pantel Sportif in Cameroon. And that was how I signed that club half season. And I played there. After there, I came back to Nigeria again and went to Togo. From Togo again, I went to Cameroon again. Something happened in between that season. I went to Cameroon again. So it was in Cameroon I, I came back. Then I think in Togo, I played against Inugu Rangers in the CAF Federation Cup and played against um, AS, um, so many clubs like in the continent. And I, I think I got that exposure then. And it was from Inugu Rangers match that AIMBA scouts saw me and they uh, talked to me. And when I came to Nigeria, they returned to Nigeria, they called me and said, would you like to play for AIMBA? I said, yes, why not? Because AIMBA has been a team that Right from my childhood, I always tell myself I want to play for Imba. I think I watched the life of Femi Thomas keeping for Imba back then when we were showing on NT, and I was like, in my house, I was like, God, I really want to play for Imba. I want to be shown on TV someday. I want to be at this top level. So I think the day I came to Imba, it was not easy as well, knowing to where that they have not, they don't have that more confidence on me. Because other, like, unlike other Nigeria people, they have watched. They have not really watched me. Just someone that introduced me to them, and they were like, uh, are we going to sign you or not? But I think Anyasi believed in me. He said, oh, we should go outside that. He wanted to think because so many calls were coming in. People were giving me so many options. Boogie pass from outside and everything. And he said, okay, just give me a few minutes. Let me think. And after about five, ten minutes, he called me inside and, and said, okay, my mind 
my conscience said I should, I should sign you. And that was how I signed for him by three years contract. And to the glory of God, here I am. And I think I must tell him, I say thank you. I must tell him by thank you because they have impacted so much in my career. I think it's from Aimba, wherever I am today, it's from Aimba. Went to the national team, went to African Cup of Nations, uh, World Cup qualifiers, whatever name I've become today is from Aimba. And I will always remember Aimba for that. Uh, John Noble. <laughs> We've seen more of Noble in this encounter than we've had the pleasure of describing the brilliance of Amas Obasuji. I think you'll love to keep it that way. <laughs> I'm not sure you would love to uh, be spoken about. The less you're spoken about <laughs> as a goalkeeper, the, the better you're doing. But Noble has been clearly at the thick of the action. It's clearly one of the reasons, or the main reason, Aimba are not a goal down at the very least. First day in Super Eagles of Nigeria was, was amazing. Was amazing because this is something that I was always praying for. And when I, I was, I think I was in at uh, Umaya, working on my passports, when someone called me and said, Nobu, ah, your name, you have been invited to Super Ego. I say, how? Me, I say, me, I say, how? I know uh, Ganro spoke to me and he said, uh, you're good, I'm going to get back to you. And I, but you know, when you're just coming from nowhere and getting into the Super Egos of Nigeria is not something you just wake up one morning and you just see yourself there. You just have to go through a lot of process. Knowing to where I don't have anybody. Nobody speaks for me. But I think my, my, my talent, my, what I did in Rivers United game against Rivers United was the only thing that speaks for me that day. So when I, the person called me and said, Nobu, uh, your name is among those that invited for Super Eagles of Nigeria. I said, how? For Afcon qualifier, I said, how? He said, uh, check your WhatsApp. Send it to your WhatsApp. When I saw it, I was at uh, Umaya. I kneeled down there. Everyone was looking at me. I said, thank you, Jesus. Dream come true. That was the first thing I said. So the day I got to the camp, it was me and uh, Anna Yawala. So, you know, when you're going to mix up with the big boys, these are people, how I many most people were watching? Uh, you, uh, a table, people were, first thing the table did was, I think a table was one person that really helped me in the camp. He walked to me and said, come, I know you're just coming here for the first time. Anything you need, money, anything you need, come and meet me, I will give it to you. And I think that alone, give me that uh, sense of belonging. And in I show was uh, someone that was very funny. He said, ah, ah, Ogoni man, how you day? I said, oh, how do you know I'm from Ogoni? He said, ah, we don't read your history since now. One and come, 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 come. So I was, to me, I was like, ah, these people already know something about me. And there was no, uh, was, apart from these uh, foreign players, like those white players coming to play for Nigeria, like Ekon, they were kind of far away from me. I think. All Nigeria victors, uh, Moses, were very close to me. The rest was very, very close. In training, we always play. If you watch out most of our videos, while we are going out for training, I, was, I will be the one singing, raising chorus. While we are going out for match, I will be the one raising chorus. Then I became close to Enacho, Awazi, because we always sing together. And I think the love was much. If we are going out, Musa, we just say, no, boy, sing. And then that's how we things start moving and everything was going well. I, I think I was very much happy to be a part of that history. He made it just below! What a hit! What a fabulous goal from Imadi Osalenhoe! That the game against Rivers United in the CAF Confederation Cup, I think it was the biggest game of my career because knowing too well that Aimba and Rivers United, they, they are just like brothers and there is always this fight between them. I think before, when Rivers United came to Abba, all the Rivers United coaches, they were all surprised seeing me being the one that's going to mount the post. I, I noticed when some of them were like, ah, now no go keep. Nah, now you go keep. Ah, wait, ah, now, now this one go keep. And they were all surprised. But then, you know, human beings are not God. Because I know too well that I can do the job. So when we went to Port Harcourt, I told myself that this is my state. And I have to uh, uh, write a name here today. It was not an easy game. I know into whether a fellow guy was in the, the, the other goal post and I was here. A fellow guy was someone that I, I, I was like, while I was coming up, I always ah, this guy is a big goalkeeper. I want to be like him someday. And knowing to whether I play facing that kind of person, it wasn't an easy one. The pressure was high, it was tense, everywhere was tensed. My family was around. 
my village, everybody, well, they want to see me. And it wasn't easy. I think uh, my wife to be then was around. My wife now, she then we were still in a relationship and she was around. She came to the stadium and I told myself, ah, I don't have to disappoint this boy today. So that was how the game started. And then it ended a uh, one uh, new victory to, to Rivers United and we went straight to penalty. I know too well that uh, I'm very good at penalties uh, because in my club in Togo, I've been the one taking penalties. Like even if we are playing a normal league game, when it comes to penalties, I'll go and take it. When it comes to Rivers United that day, I know it's going to be a difficult one. But And I told my players that, see, guys, I believe in myself. All I need from you guys is just to score. I am assuring you guys that I will save one or two of these penalties. But I just need you guys to score. It was not easy because Serena Olisema missed the first kick. And Rivers United scored the first kick. You know, in that kind of scenario, you see, they all, everyone is like, ah, Rivers United have taken the day. But I keep my mind up. I didn't give up. I think I saved one penalty in the uh, regular shootout. It was 5 5 4 5 4. Then we went to do, uh, the normal, anyone that missed, then ends the game. So they played, and I saved the other one, and we played, we scored. So it was just for River, uh, for Aimba to play. And that was how I went in there and I slot in against a, a fellow guy and Aimba was, uh, was the champion for the day. And I think that day was the best day of my life. I, I got home and I was listening to radio and we had like, a river son came to river State to destroy, destroy rivers and I on river soil. And it was funny, but to me, I was enjoying it because I think this is club that I went for a trial and they didn't see me as anything then. And for me, I just have to put in my best to prove to them that I'm equal to the tax. And I thank God that today, Rivers United have seen that uh, that part of me that yeah, this guy can can really fit in. I'm sure, they would rather take all three, given how things have turned out here this evening. Hey, Maje, it's gone past him. Well positioned goalkeeper John Noble. I mean, in fairness, it's an easy catch for him. Comes directly to his near post. That's what you expect your goalkeeper to do. My first uh, uh, day in Cameroon, I think I was so happy. Because after our last game in, Cam in Togo, someone made me say, okay, do you, want, do you like to play in Cameroon? I said, yes. They sent me your passport. And that was how I was. I got to Cameroon airport and people were holding my name. Inside of me, I was like, ah, <laughs> people know me at all. <laughs> people know me at all. Because I have to go to market that day. Because this morning they paid me. Someone gave me, I was about uh, 60,000 safer. Someone gave me one of our games, so I saved that money. So while I was going to Cameroon, I didn't have anything good thing to wear. I have to use that money, I went to market that money. I have to buy Nigeria, was that, when Nigeria is what, I have to buy Nigeria jersey. I didn't even have a canvas, I was wearing palm slippers. I have to just try to see if I can just look somehow good. So that was how I went to, I got to the airport, and people were holding uh, my name, they were looking for John Noble, John Noble goalkeeper, and I was like, ah, now wow. So the president of the club was at the airport waiting for me. And they carried me to a hotel. I got to that hotel, sincerely speaking. The first thing I did, inside of me, my Nigeria blood mentality, I was like, ah, I asked the guy, no vessel, how much be this room? You guys said it's 250,000 Naira in Naira. And I was like, 250,000 Naira in Naira for just one night. I said, ah, wow. And when I <laughs> opened the door, everything was in the room. There was food. There was fruit, there was juice, there was all sorts of drink. If you want alcohol, everything was there. So it was a suit. Everything was there. And I went to, I got to the bathroom. Trust me, I don't even know what to use. Because everything was liquid. The, uh, the men, I have about 15 tower. And I was telling myself, where will I start from? Mistakenly, I didn't know it was uh, shampoo. I wanted to thought it was uh, bathing uh, soup. I poured it on my head and I was, ah, I knew it was shampoo, I have to stop. I just wash my head and I just pour water and clean myself. I didn't use anything again. But I don't even know what to use because I was confused. It wasn't easy for me, trust me. So I think I was happy. I think today, even if I've not featured in any of the Super Eagles game, but today Nigeria knows me. Today, when my children grow, I can just say, ah, see me, I don't play for Super Eagles before. I don't go African Cup of Nations. I don't play World Cup qualifiers. I have gone to several uh, African qualifiers. I have gone this, I have done this, I have done this. and. I think that's the joy of every player to represent this country. I'm, I think I'm the most happiest man on earth today because this is something everybody wants. I remember the day my father called me after the game against, uh, was it the, one of our games, against, game against Egypt. He said, son, ah, that he was surprised. Oh, 
that the whole community gathered themselves, put television together, and everyone was watching me. Both my enemies, both the ones that wish me good luck, both the ones that are happy. Everyone was just happy for me. And they just want me to still see me succeed because I'm their own. So for me, I think coming back to Nigeria was the best decision I took in my life. I never regretted it.